And like you said, you're not thinking anymore, oh, I learned how to side chain. You're just thinking, oh, well, now I don't know how to make this new bass <laughs> drop happen. Like, what the heck? Like, I don't right. know how to do anything. And it's like, well, buddy, you just learned how to side chain. You got to you gotta congrat, congratulate yourself on that and, like, give yourself props for that. So, yeah, 100%. Exactly. Like you said, there there is no, like, a game where it's like, you know, the little music plays in Skyrim. You're level eight. And it's like, yeah, I'm level eight, right? It doesn't right. feel any different. No. But it tells me I'm <laughs> level eight. So, cool. <laughs> Hello and welcome to level 113 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with bold takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy, here with my compadre, David. What up? How's your evening going? How's everything going? Going going pretty good. Uh, Not too bad of a day. Not too long, not too short, you know? Just a, it's another Monday, even though it's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. How about you? It's uh, it's all right. I was able to get a protein shake in me. Um, Ooh. Was feeling was feeling kind of dragging in the middle of the day. You know, just low energy. But mm-hmm. um, that night fever, I kind of you know, I, I'm that's starting to creep up again. So, got a little bit of energy going. But um, yeah, doing all right. Good, good. Doing all right, ladies and gentlemen. Chickens, ducks, and hens, we are glad you are joining us for this level of the pod. Um, we got a couple of cool topics, and of course, we're going to be talking about other gaming bits, news, content, whatever. You want to, you want to name or call it or, or whatever you want to say, that's that's what we got on the docket here. But um, yeah, unless we've got any other, I know sometimes we open these up with little adventures or stories. Uh, I don't know if we have that for today, but if we don't, let's hop right back. Let's hop right into our first segment, so to speak. All righty. That is, of course, what we're playing. That's right. This is the segment where we talk about what we're playing. Now, uh, okay. I can offer mine first, or David, if you wanted to go first. Shoot it. What you got? Okay. I have two games. Keeping it, you you got a nice thing going. I got a it's nice thing two, going here. It seems. I, I got a nice thing going here, and it's the same two: EA Sports, oh, we... college football, and uh, Expeditions Rome. Now, oh, I will me. Ad- I will admit exactly. I will admit that there's been um, a lot less college football and much more Expedition Rome. There's not so much of a balance as there was. For the past week and a half, two weeks. Okay. Um, I am nearing the end of Act 2. I think I might have said that last week. That I was nearing the Act. But I know for sure <laughs> I'm nearing the end of Act 2 of uh, Expeditions Rome. I have conquered all the sectors of Egypt. I have to complete this main objective mission. Which I can then force the Pharaoh to withdraw his troops from Alexand- Alexandria. So he can then... Go to war with his sister Cleopatra. I am supposed to, I think, help Cleopatra win back the throne of Egypt. And then that helps me with whatever I've got to do. And then we move on to Act 3. Again, I am really enjoying this game. When I start playing it and I get into it, I'm, I'm really into it. I would be lying if I said that you can start to, we can start to wrap it up. Uh, (laughs) We can start. We can start to Get wrap to that this point. Thing. Huh? This thing has got to start wrapping up pretty soon. Um, yeah. So, if we, but if you're telling me that, based on where I'm, in, I am in the game. If you're telling me, well, you've got another eight, ten hours. I'm cool with that. I think I can definitely be into this for another eight to ten hours. Um, but if you're like, hey, you got another twenty five hours, we're gonna have to. We're gonna start a problem. I might have to take a hiatus, <laughs> a sabbatical, they call it, and then return. Um, Via yeah, that, and then college football. Um, played a little bit of it. I'll obviously play some more. I'm still in my season one as being the, as the head coach of Mizzou. I think I'm going to play a couple of more seasons as that coach. Maybe try out as another coach, and then I'm probably done with it. Um, oh, because it just doesn't capture the magic of 14. And yeah, I can probably trade it in for a decent dollar amount and get something else that I'm interested in. Dragon's Dogma 2, that came out this year. I was super hyped for it, and I forgot it came out. <laughs> um, you know, obviously, I think it was last year. Yeah, last year, uh, 
Arm Core, Fires of Rubicon. I'm still interested in looking at that. Of course, Baldur's Gate 6, that's available. I still haven't got that. There's a bunch of other games that I'm interested in. Now, all the games I've named are actually pretty long game. Baldur's games. Gate 6? Did I say Baldur's Gate 6? I meant you Baldur's did. Gate 3. Arm Core 6, Baldur's I, Gate I 3. I knew it. I knew yeah. you were gonna, you were mixing Armor Core with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Baldur's Gate 3, uh, want to get into that, you know? Um, and uh, as well as a bunch of other things. games. Yeah, uh, I've heard. Yeah, I, I've actually heard um, because we didn't really talk about that game in depth, and it was the game of the year last year. Yeah, I heard some people like, "Hey, why aren't you guys talking about this?" And it's like, "Well, ain't got time." Um, I'm trying to play Starfield, and I've put sixty hours into that game, and I don't even know if it's actually that good of a game. <laughs> uh, uh, so just don't don't have the time. But I don't know. Maybe we'll get to it. There's so many games. Obviously, we talked about before. There's so many games. Right. Um, one game that won't be coming out, I don't think we touched on. And I'll say it now, so that way that I'll save my final thought for something else. I don't know if we touched on Avowed getting delayed. That, um, I don't think so. Avowed, which was supposed to come out this year, got delayed to next year. So that's a bummer. Because I yeah. think that was the only other game I was really looking forward to this year. I can't remember if Fable comes out this year or next year. Uh, but that's a bummer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've been playing. Those have been the two games. Mostly been playing Expeditions Rome and a little bit of EA Sports College Football. Uh, how about you? Um, I haven't really had a lot of time this week. Mm -hmm. um, I did get some more time into Arrow. So it's it's separated into like four segments, you know, kind of like... I guess Mario Kart, where it has, like, the star cup and the mushroom cup, you know. So, it's set up like that. So, there's four sections of different uh, maps or mm -hmm. race, whatever you want to call them. And I made it to the second part. And I've, I'm just doing everything on standard right now, just to get through the maps and, under, you know, get a feel for them, memorize them, so I know where mm -hmm. all the speed boosts and stuff are. And on standard, it's actually starting to be difficult now like i'm not just demolishing between first and second place now like second place is like right behind me so now it's becoming more interesting and i feel like i'm gonna stick it with this one okay i hope and then uh just mostly a patch there's a little bit of overwatch but not too much hmm, okay okay so you're keeping it exploring more of arrow yeah. Getting into that, you know I'm what I'm saying? It. I'm loving it, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. We might have a, you know, something that sticks around for a while. Like, like I've said, surprisingly, I've been sticking with these games. Maybe, you know, Arrow makes a, makes at least a few more weeks of appearances here. Let's see. You know? I hope so. And I hope that, because it says multiplayer is, like, coming soon or in development or whatever it says. I forget. So mm -hmm. hopefully I still have a knack for it when that comes out. But yeah. who's to say? Because I think it's still in beta Gotcha. Okay. I'm not too sure. Okay. Got you. You know, it's interesting because, like, you mentioned that Arrow kind of borrows, like, the uh, Mario Kart thing of, like, you know, the Mushroom Cup and different things like that. I just had an idea pop in for a game. Let Ooh. me know what you think of this game. Okay. It can be a kart game, kind of. It can be a racing game or whatever, kind of like uh, an Arrow or an F-Zero, right? But um, it's Vice-themed. So the mushroom cup, everybody's on shrooms. Like the sh like the screen emulates somebody <laughs> on shrooms, and you and you, it's whoever can make it right. You get right. the tree cup, everybody's on reefer. They've got to figure they've got to figure out whatever is going on there. You get the powder cup, everybody's on that, and they call it white girl. All right, <laughs> everybody's on that white girl. You got to figure out what's going on there. You know what I'm saying? I think that would be a very extremely adult. Mature oh yeah, it's like a eighteen plus, and like yeah, yeah. <laughs> results may vary, but you know it could be a mature themed uh, Mario Party type of cart game. There you go. You know that could be either very interesting or very mm -hmm. scary. It, it yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure, it's for sure, scary. For sure, scary. <laughs> Just how scary. Uh, um. All righty. Well, with 
the games we're playing out of the way. I did just remember that I've also been playing the crap out of a mobile game, but I'm not going to give it time of day because it wasn't. It's not Eat Venture. I'll say that for everyone that's that's assuming that it might be that. It's not. It's something different. Uh-oh. But I'll save that for a different time because I don't. I'm not sure if I'm really playing it. I'm kind of been playing it a lot, but I'm not sure if Yo- I'm really playing it. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna hop into our uh, into our topics for this uh, for this uh, episode, and so we've got two. Uh, let's see. Did you want to offer your topic first? We can. We can do mine. Okay. Okay. So, and we've done this kind of before, but I feel like it's gonna be a little different this time. So, in life, we play a lot of video games, right? Mm-hmm. What if? life was a video game now i know every video game that has stats they're kind of all over the place you know if you go to gta versus you know skyrim like there's two are way totally different stat options right. right right so in life it could literally be anything mm-hmm. so if you could max three stats in real life mm-hmm. what would they be Oh, if I can max three stats in life. Um, mm. I don't know if you want to shoot all three out at once, if you want to go back and forth one at a time. Uh, let's shoot one off because I have to actually think about this. Like, I, okay. Like, uh, okay. So I, if I had to think of one that one stat right off the bat that I would want to max out in life, um, I would say that it's probably, uh, I don't even know what you would call it, but... Um, I guess you know what, like like intelligence. I guess because it would lend to a different to a lot of different things, like like being able to yeah. uh, figure out like finance financial e- equations and calculations, so I can make money and do all that stuff, as well as like other things. I guess like my intelligence. I would that be the first thing I would have maxed at in life. I, that's a good one, and like you're kind of like one of the smartest people I know. So like oh. you're kind of halfway there. I don't. I don't think I'm halfway at all. I, it's very nice of you. It's very nice of you to say. Yeah. I mean, you, you're using big words and stuff all the time, and you like. Yeah, you but I'm reference I'm, a lot of stuff, and I'm you know, sure like, eighty all these the developers. Time, I'm using the wrong word. Probably eighty percent of the time. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. Literally, I don't know because <laughs> I don't know half the words. But <laughs> that that that's a good one. I mean, that's very useful literally anywhere yeah i think so you know um one that i would choose and i was thinking about all of the things i've been interested since i was you know little into now and if i had to choose one thing that i've been interested in over all these years would be like music production Mm -hmm. and like i guess digitally more so like i i know how to play some instruments i grew up you know i played the bass guitar drums Mm -hmm. even you know some piano i took that in college um but i've always been interested in making my own music and i've started i got some songs released but like i still have no idea what i'm doing Mm -hmm. and i feel like if i knew what i was doing more i would be able to sit there and actually like really enjoy making music because i enjoy it now but it's like I want to do this and I have no idea how to do that. And I look up videos and I don't yeah. know what the terms are. I have no terminology in this, you know, FL studios or whatever. I'm just like song goes slow to fast. What is that? Like, I, yeah. What's your, you know? you know, your, your BPM. What's a synthesizer. What's, what's the, the trouble and all these different things like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, like, you know, and like you were saying before, sometimes it's like, because you know, I've done that too, there's like, sometimes you can get frustrated with the limitations, um, which is good because it, it, it shows that you're growing, right? You have right. a new limitation you get you get uh, frustrated by, but there was an old limitation you had that you were frustrated by, and you figured out how to do it, and now you know how to do it. It's no longer a limitation, right? But mm-hmm. you had to kind of, if you could forego all those frustrations... And just 100 per like at level 100 music production, you feel like, okay, I'm making the best music out there. I don't have to worry about any. I can concentrate on other things because I know I've got the music thing down. I don't have to think about that. Um, right. Like I can like focus on, hey, here, 
what's the best avenue of like marketing it or like selling it or whatever like that because i already know that whatever i'm making is like super legit you know mm-hmm. um yeah 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 that's that's yeah that's, it, i think things like that yeah it's it's really you, useful you, you brought up the you know like you knew this and then you kind of like leveled up and now you know this and this mm-hmm. is your newest boundary like i've never really thought about that like you don't you don't see that increments of your knowledge expanding you just kind of know and then you know like in the video game like you would you know level up mm-hmm. and your stat would go up or plus one but like that i think it would help some people like me especially if you like physically saw that development like just out of nowhere you just boop plus one you're like mm-hmm. wait yeah finally you know but right. you just slowly increase and you never really notice until one day you're just like, wait a minute, I have grown, but I didn't, I, you just don't see it physically, the development. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. I remember like, I mean, just an example over like sticking with music or whatever, just like, um, like, like started like trying to learn how to side chain. Right. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, when I was producing music before it was mostly like hip hop or R and B oriented. You don't side chain. You don't, you don't side. there's no trap songs where you side chain. But there's a lot of EDM <laughs> songs where you do sidechain. Right. And uh, when I started producing EDM, even I noticed that switching genre, which is why I think I eventually ended up liking producing EDM more, is because there were new things I had to learn. And there was like right. things of upskilling. And so there was a frustration of, I don't know, how, I don't know, first, what's first you're like, what's that thing they do when it makes the thing? First, exactly. first you have to find the definition of what that is. That's called <laughs> side chaining. Okay, got it. And then the thing is, how do you do it, right? And then the thing is, well, how do you do it well? How do you do it with these type of instruments? How do you do it at this type of BT- BPM and different things and different things like that? And then eventually you're creating a song where you've done all that correctly. And like you said, you're not thinking anymore, oh, I learned how to side chain. You're just thinking, oh, well, now I don't know how to make this new bass <laughs> drop happen. Like, what the heck? Like, I don't right. know how to do anything. And it's like, well, buddy, you just learned how to side chain. You gotta, you gotta congrat, congratulate yourself on that and like, give yourself props for that. So yeah, hundred exactly. percent. Like you said, there, there is no like a game where it's like, you know, the little music plays in Skyrim, you're level eight. And it's like, yeah, I'm level eight. Right. It doesn't right. feel any different. No, but it tells me I'm <laughs> level eight. So cool. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. That's yeah. That's a great one. Which is why, like, I think um, the the second, the uh, the second, at least for me personally, the second skill that I maybe want to be able to max out for me would be, I guess, creativity. And if I had to specify that creativity, I guess I would say um, just writing. So writing in general, not just like script writing, but also if it's novel writing, if it's content writing, right? Because writing is something that I do as a passion for like creativity, Mm -hmm. but it's also something that's really prevalent in my main job. So um, it would help me in both. It would it would help me exponentially in both. And so being able to have that skill and knowing how to do that. Great. Again, it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, I have I've had the the um, I guess like the the kind of the opportunities to write things and submit them to festivals and have them either get nominated or get accepted yeah, or possibly that win up. something. Yeah. So, so that's a little bit of like that Skyrim music you've gone, you're now at level eight. Right. Mm-hmm. But then what is it really like, like what, what? does that really mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kind of like that thing of like of Skyrim, where the whole mechanic of it, you're at level eight, but the world also levels up with you. So it's like, what does that really mean? Like why? Like what does level eight mean if everything's level eight? You know what I'm saying? Uh, so <laughs> it's. But I, I I think that'd be another one that I want to max out is probably writing. Uh, again, like you might not feel it, but like I feel you're kind of already up there. Like you said, you brought up your uh, the nominations for your scripts and stuff. Like that's that's just awesome on its own. Like you're definitely, you know, level ten or something. You're like you're up there. You know, I've I tried to write a movie script. And I had like three pages. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like it's 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 like a really te- well, specifically for movie movie script writing. It's it's a really technical medium of 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 writing. There's a lot of 
technical things and like there's software that help with a lot of the formatting and stuff but mm-hmm. there's still just a lot of other technical things in regards to compared to something like if you're just writing free prose like a like a like a book like a like like some kind of novel or if you're writing like some kind of manuscript or if you're writing some kind of poetry right there's a lot more freedom to be fully expressive in that and right in script writing there's there's constraints there um right but kinda, you know like in a box yeah 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 What's um, in the box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's there's a whole thing. There's like a whole thought process behind the idea of actually like constraints being a good thing if you're trying to be creative or you're trying to design because immediately you know what you can't do. Right. So so then you're investing all your creativity into things that you know you can do within the box you're in. Uh, so I mean, you know, that's that's I've never thought about it like that. It's a way of looking at it. it's called design thinking. You, you thought well, outside the box, inside the box, exactly. It's called design thinking. It's something that I actually use in my regular, my regular you nine just, to five. You just off. leveled me up. Thanks. There you go. Well, there you go. That's uh, <laughs> that is one class worth of Wayne State uh, 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 education given to you. So you ain't got to pay Man, for it. I, I appreciate it because Lord knows I paid I for am. enough classes I didn't need to take. There you go. <laughs> Um, let's see another stat for me. Um, I'm not sure what it would be called, but I guess intellect as well, but only mm-hmm. in, in like a certain area. Like, obviously, I play a lot of games. I played a lot of, you know, card games, Pokemon, Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not to like down myself like i am obviously decent at the games you know i i win games yada yada but like i'm very average at the games i play at the card games i play you know stuff like that so like i'm not saying like hey i want to be rank one at you know like everything like if i could be like a top 50 in something that i really enjoy Mm -hmm. i think that would be like really really cool and feel good about it you know and this it's i've i've gone to uh tournaments for a dragon ball z card game and i never made it to like the top 10 so i just you know just to be able to at least get to top 10 you know Mm -hmm. like i i i lost out on the final fight and you know i got 15 like if if I could learn to be that well of of thinking of strategies and stuff, mm-hmm. that would be awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. All hard. These things are they're it's amazing how people can think in these card games and in these oh, video yeah. games. And it just blows my mind. It's like I never would have thought of that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think like um yeah, like card games, strategy games, like even me being someone that like plays a lot of strategy game. Like when I see someone that's like a full blown master at something like Crusader Kings, I'm like, like, and then they're like, yeah, I have a, um, it's like, yeah, I got to go in and do my shift at Target. I'm like, what are you doing at Target? You should be in a, aren't you? Know, shouldn't you be in a UN council somewhere? Like this is absurd. You know what I'm saying? Like the level people have, but of like just knowledge of 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 games and being. You know, that require that kind of thinking power. And you're like, man, that's incredible. And they're like, especially like going to like those car conventions. I haven't gone to a lot. I went to like a couple of Pokemon ones when I was younger. Mm-hmm. But again, this is me being young. I'm a kid. You know, I'm walking in here 10, 11 years old. And there's some grown adults. And they're like, oh, I'll be out destroy you with my Pikachu. And I'm like, I'm sitting here like I've got a full blown. You know what I'm saying? Like holographic Blastoise. How is this person knocking me out with a Pikachu or whatever? Right. It's because it, they just build different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And and they know the certain things. Now also it kind of helped that person that he was in his 30s and I was 20. <laughs> that also <laughs> right. helped. That had a but, couple of years on you. <laughs> but there were some couple other 30-year-olds he had to beat to get to me. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, uh, let's see here. My last skill. I feel like it'd be easy. I feel like it'd be easy for me to go like like physical condition and endurance, right? I feel like that's an easy opt opt out. So um, the third one I'm going to go to is go, is going to be like charisma, and and I'll say that is because I've learned in life 
is that you can pretty much do whatever you want if you talk good. And you can just convince people of things. Tell you can pretty much do it. and get whatever you want. Uh, it's, it's the easiest thing. Like, it, like honestly, like it's like if you like, what's the easiest way to get it to earn a million dollars? Is to talk someone talk someone out of theirs. It's way easier <laughs> to earn it that way than to earn it regularly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So that's like that's another thing where I'm like Max Stat. I'm walking around. I'm walking around. I'm I'm charisma. I'm I'm schmoozing my way up to the top, tippity top, and I'm like, hey. You don't need that five million dollars, do you? Really? And they're like, "Well, I was actually going to leave this to my children and my children's children, but no, I don't. You've got a great smile, right?" <laughs> and then before you know it, I've got five million. That kid's grandchildren ain't got nothing. The right, the world is right. Okay, so uh, I'd say, yeah, I'd say charisma is probably the last one. I uh, that's that's so true. It's a little story. Uh, back when I lived with my friend i lived with them for three years and we used to have parties like all the time and i'm not really the talking type you'd be surprised you know me having a podcast and everything but i didn't talk too much i was very introverted and i was just mostly playing you know the card games like you know waterfall yada 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 Mm -hmm. and my roommate just everyone just kind of flocked to him everyone's talking to him everyone's you know hanging out with him blah 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 i was just like how do, how do you do it? it? It was his charisma. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, man, I I never learned how to do it. You know, it's it's interesting because you said, like, you're more introverted, except for, like, you wouldn't know with the podcast. I think this medium uh, kind of it does allow a bit more expression from people who are more introverted. It's like I myself am extremely introverted. Like, I talk a lot on this on this podcast, but I would say that within an episode of this podcast, I say more words than I do outside of the podcast. Probably if you combine two weeks, if you just combine two <laughs> weeks and said, who have you spoke more outside of the podcast in two weeks or inside one episode, easily one episode. Um, but yeah, man, I've seen charisma just work a lot. It, it's, it's one of the things you get taught it very early. If you're playing, um, I, you know, going back to games, me playing moral one, there's right. there's there's whole mission sequences you can skip with just having a high enough charisma score. There's just whole things. There's like whole fights you don't have to have. You there's whole quests trekking out to, to the middle of nowhere. If you if your charisma is seventy five, you ain't got to do it. And I'm like, oh, well, bet <laughs> I'm just gonna be charismatic. You know, that's how it works in real life too. It just yeah, it works out. Yeah. Um, oh, my last one. I feel you like it would be easy to just to be like, you know, I I wish I went to the gym all the time and had the willpower for it and yada yada. But I think I would put mine into self-care and not necessarily Mm. just like that, but like instead of staying up all night, I just went to bed on time and, you Mm. know, I... I ate a little better, and mm-hmm. uh, I I had more time of the day to do these things. Mm-hmm. You know, you go from uh, I work ten hour days, and it could be four days that week, it could be seven days that week. Who knows? And it it kind of takes a toll on you, and you notice like later in life, like oh man, I probably should have slept more in my twenties. Yeah, or even like, or, or like, so like for me, that's a great example of like, I have the habit of, um, you know, when I was younger, I didn't have to, I mean, I maybe had it, but this whole thing of like, uh, this monster of, of things of like anxiety is something I never really had to fight, right? So like the idea of that, uh, like, like I've built the habit of, I can easily to stay up to treat in the morning. Like during a week, and then wake up at you know whatever you got to wake up in the morning to go to work, do the thing. Right, it's nothing. it's nothing. Not no more, because if I go to sleep at two and I've got to wake up for a meeting at like ten or something, um, my whole my whole brain ability is thrown off. It's just gone, right? Because I <laughs> my body has my body and brain hasn't had enough time to 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 set, to set off to reset to 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 rest and all those different things. My whole thing is off. So now I've got to be more like okay, I've got to be more studious and making sure that I go to sleep at a decent amount of time. Now, like you were saying, if you had maxed out self care, you'd maybe have more tread on the tires, so to speak. 
You know, yes. just like I said that for myself. Like wow. I have would have had that more tread on one. the tires. Yeah, yeah. That, so, yes, exactly that. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's it's funny. It's for sure that's an important one. That's that's uh yeah that'll probably be like if we had four that would be my fourth one I think. Because also like self care isn't just isn't just a physical thing. It's the emotional and mental part too, right? Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's a good one. Thank that you, is a good you. one. I like it. I like it. Those are the rules. So we've got stats. Um, let's, let's, so let's see stats again are, uh, let's see, intelligence, um, writing, and uh, charisma for me. It seemed like a lot of mine were pretty much money driven. I don't know what that says about me. Uh, most of them were money driven. The writing one's a little <laughs> bit of, of expression, you know. There's some, and if you enjoy writing, if that's cathartic for you, there's a little bit of self care in that. Right. Um, and then uh, let's see, yours is pretty much kind of like intelligent strategy. Um, yeah, kind of, yeah, right? Like intelligent intellect- strategy and yeah. music production and music self-care. production and self care. I like that. I like that. I mean, because all those also too. I mean, you know, like the music production thing. Like that's that's something that's expression for you, right? But also, I mean, right? If you're you know getting those like Timbaland from in like 2010 checks. Where Timbaland makes a beat and someone pays a 1.6 mil for it. I mean, I'm pretty sure you'd take that. You wouldn't have a problem with that. Bet. Yeah. Yeah. Bet, for sure. Bet. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, I'm curious if people if people let us know. We post it up, comments, places. Let us know what the what the stats are that you would max. What stats would you max? Oh, yeah, that and I'm those would be some nice reads. I'm sure we're going to get some real inappropriate ones. Uh, and you, you know what? At least one. If that's if that's what you want to max stat, more power to you. I think you might want to pick a very specific career in life. If that's where you want to max stat that one thing, but you know what I'm saying? I wonder what that would be out there in the cornfields. If you know hmm. what I'm saying? Oh, oh, a lot of corn. Yeah, a lot of corn. So, uh, yeah. So uh, let's see. We'll we'll move on to my topic then. And uh, okay. okay. And uh, let's see here. My topic. Um, Speaking of wanting to max skill something or having completely no skill at it. So I don't know if people know who Raygun is. I forgot her whole name. I'm not going to look up her whole name. It's Raygun. I know. That's it. it. Nickname is Raygun. Uh, there's a popular meme of this Australian breakdancer who went to the Olympics and uh, proceeded to, they said dancing. I think it was um, you know, like a mix of convulsing and kind of stroking out. And uh, obviously, she was judged by right. the judges and did not receive a single point, which is low key the funniest thing. Because uh, even when you're flailing that's like a insane. duck, that's worth like, the point. She at least put in effort. I know, man. Like, she a tried one? a one, maybe. <laughs> I didn't know on, they could dude. give zeros. I mean, she looked like an electrocuted bunny for several steps. Yeah, at least she, like, when she was going single... on her side and she flipped over to the other yeah. side and like touched her toe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or when she was like doing a Michael Jackson thriller, like give her a point. Come on. But they didn't give her any. And um, I think that is a clear case of someone being somewhere they clearly did not belong. Oh, yeah. So that made me think about my own gaming journey, my own gaming experience, life in general. Have I done or have there been gaming experiences and moments where it was very clear to me that I did not belong? Right? Whether it's. What was it that showed me I clearly did not belong here? I should not be playing this game. Right. It is not for me. I am not good at it, and I never will be. Um, the first game that jumped to mind to me was a game I first got for from a friend in middle school. Again, I'm strategy guy, right? Strategy player, playing all these strategy games. Oh, that's and I'm talking about all the Command & Conquer games with my friend. And my friend's like, oh, man, I've been playing this this other strategy game that's super awesome, and you would love it. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah. It's about like World War. I forgot. He was like World War One or World War. It's like one of the World Wars. It's really cool. You'd really love it. And you're into history and all that. I'll give it to you. And I'm like, okay, great. I actually still have the disc somewhere. Um, Heck and yeah. that, and that game was a game called Hearts of Iron Three. Now, if you don't know what Hearts of Iron is, Hearts of Iron is essentially the war. I can't remember which one. World War. I want to say World War Two. But is the it's the it's Paradox's World War II equivalent of Crusader Kings. 
or okay. or um you you know Europa Universalis, right? Which is like their their medieval their medieval one. Um, it's essentially one of those. And I remember installing this game and firing it up, and I'm saying, "All right, cool. I'm gonna jump into this." And I could I could not have been more out of place. I didn't know what anything meant. I didn't know what anything did. Obviously, they didn't have tutorials. Even if it had tutorials, I still would not have learned or known anything with the tutorials. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what is going on. I'm confused. I'm getting rid of this. I put it, I, I installed it. I played about five to 10 minutes of it. I said, this ain't it. I immediately uninstalled it. I tried to give the game back to my friend. He said, no, just try it out some more. I Here's what I secretly think. I secretly think he didn't know what the hell he was doing in that game either. And he wanted to get it off someone on someone. So he got, he put it on me. So he gave me this game and said, here, Hey, you try highly, it. Highly, highly probable. So, um, yeah, that was one where I'm like, I don't belong here. This is for people that are way. Look, man, I'm in middle school. I got to learn. Like, you know, I got to learn about like, you know, I'm in puberty, dude. Like I, I, I can't figure this out right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, it's too much. It's just too much. Uh, so yeah, that was someplace I clearly didn't belong, and I swiftly got myself out of there. It's good thinking. Mine. Yeah. Um, mine's not that much of not belonging there, but mm. Fortnite. Obviously, mm. played on Apex, Call of Duty, Warfare, whatever it's called, and obviously I know the Battle Royale. All right, I I I know that part well. I belong there, sure. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I started, you know, playing a little bit and my son wanted to, like, play ranked, the f way people build in that game, I can barely even think of how to put up a wall on a floor and some mm -hmm. stairs. Like, I, I'm just gone. And then these people build, like, a freaking house in the matter mm -hmm. of seconds. I'm just like, I, I, this is not for me. And then I just get blown away because they're jumping the walls and building a wall, taking away the wall, editing the wall. I'm like, how do you even think this fast? What is going on? Mm -hmm. And I'm just down, dead. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm. I can sure we can play no build, but that I don't belong there. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback on that one. That wasn't my second one, but I'm gonna piggyback on that one. So that will be okay. my second one. Is 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 Fortnite? Um, when it first came out, I kind of belonged a little bit, maybe. But I jumped back out, and then I jumped back in a few months later, and wherever whatever the hell happened in those three months, I clearly did not belong in whatever happened after that. <laughs> uh, because like you said, you're jumping in, and they're and they're building these structures, and they're shooting you while they're building the structures and you're like, I'm just trying to jump. Like, like, how do I jump in this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, They've done I'm eight just, things I'm trying to do. Yeah, like, I'm just trying to jump and turn around. How do I switch guns? Like, I'm just trying to do these things and people are up there, you know, building the freaking Taj Mahal and, and freaking sniping you from a quarter yeah. mile off while they're doing all this at the same time. I'm like, this is too much. I'm like, you guys using this like keyboard and mouse? They're like, no, dude, you're on Xbox. We all have controllers. I'm like, yeah, but you guys got, you guys got like those controllers that came with Steel Battalion where it's like 30 freaking buttons. I'm like, what, like, why are you guys doing this? You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, <laughs> What's I, going on? I was confused. I felt so old. And this is, we're talking Fortnite's been around for maybe close to 10 years now, I think. Somewhere At least it there. feels that way. And so I'm like, I'm pretty much, I'm a younger dude. I should, this, this is no problem. I'm a Dr. Disrespect is freaking playing uh, Fortnite. You know what I'm saying? Like these people older than me, I see streaming and playing this. I got this right. and I'm walking in there and I'm like, ah, how do you turn around? What's the, what's the button to kick? How do you kick someone in this? <laughs> and, they're, and they're up here like, oh yeah, watch this. I'm going to freaking build, uh, I don't know. I'm going to freaking build the castle, the, the, the Hogwarts castle and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I'm like, man, I can't believe this. And, uh, and so, yeah, that was the place where I'm like, I clearly don't belong. I got out of there. There's no Fortnite on anything. I remember I briefly played it a little bit when it first came to switch which it had been on other platforms before it came to the Switch. And I remember playing it on the Switch, and I had a little bit of that semblance because, again, everyone was new, so no one had to, no one really knew how to do anything. But as soon as they started learning there, 
and then people are up here, you know, building freaking, you know, architectural digest things while they're killing you. I was like, I got to be out of here. This ain't for me. Yeah. I do yeah. not belong here at it's all. It's insane. Yeah. Um, Another one. So I was at my friend's house for a party and eventually towards the end of the party more so it was like six in the morning and mm -hmm. they were like oh let's go play some halo okay and it was like it was halo 2 and i played halo 3 a bit at that point but like that obviously they're not the same game it's mm -hmm. the same mechanics whatever sure but like they're all we're doing the four screen split way whatever for people playing and i just I did not belong there. I came in last anytime I got to play because there, there was like eight or ten of us, you know, just taking turns and stuff like that. I, mm -hmm. I'm i like, yeah, I'm just I'm just going to watch. Yeah, there. I it, they were good. I was not. I don't even really like Halo. I just play Halo three because my friends played it. I'm just I I'm done. You guys, you can skip me. Yeah. I feel you. I feel you. I think so. Mine isn't going to be Halo, my but my last one is an mul online multiplayer shooter, and it's Call of Duty, specifically Call of Duty Infinite. Um, so I've talked about like how I played, uh, I played multiplayer for Titanfall Two. Well, Titanfall Two came out after Call of Duty Infinite. All right. So all there was before that was Titanfall, and I never played Titanfall. I played Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. So I'm jumping into Call of Duty. And I'm seeing people wall jump and they're flying in the air. And you got to remember the last Call of Duty I played online was probably um, Modern, Modern Warfare, Warfare 3. 2. Modern Warfare 2? No, Modern Warfare 2. Nice. So I'm coming from Modern Warfare 2 to Call of Duty Infinite. And I'm walking around and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, how is <laughs> somebody's flying? Like, how are people flying all of a sudden? Why are they on the wall? Well, how are they on the wall? And I'm like, okay, I'm going to learn how to jump, wall jump or whatever. That was another 50 to 100 deaths I got added on to me because I don't know how to wall jump. I don't know how to fly. I'm like, how do you fly? Where'd you get the booster packs from? And there was so much going on. I'm like, I don't, I can't, I don't know. What's, I'm out of here. I don't get this yeah, at all. I didn't I'm even going. try that one. Yeah. You I, know saw, I saw like I'm, the ads for it. I was like, nope. Uh, yeah. Not for me. Well, I mean, it, and, and like, again, that one was a little bit different because in most of the Call of Duties, I would play and beat the main campaign and then go into multiplayer. With mm -hmm. that one, I didn't play and beat the main, the main campaign, mostly because I just couldn't get into it. I'm like, why am I like, what, like, what, why is Jon Snow in space? Like, what is, what is going on here? So I'm just going like, all right, I'm just going to go play multiplayer. And I went to do that. And then I'm like, how is this person flying? And so I'm like, okay, this whole game, I got to push the eject button on. <laughs> this whole thing. I got Jon Snow in space. I got people flying over top of me. I don't know what's going on. Eject. I'm out. I don't belong here at all. Don't belong. I feel you. Yeah. Um, I got one more that I can think of. Okay. Uh, back when Sega was the thing. Okay. We're doing mm -hmm. way back. Mm -hmm. I had this game. I think actually I still have it. Maybe. Uh, Pitfall. Uh, I have no idea what to do in that game. Mm -hmm. Lost cause. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've never gotten past the first level. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, F that yeah. game. Yeah. There's, there's people I'm giving you, I'm giving you a tease, um, of maybe a topic for, for next, next level. Which is games that made us basically say like, "WTF am I doing?" Because that is that is for that is a hundred percent a game where you start playing it and you you know what you're doing, but like, what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I know that I I know that I jump and I swing on the vine, but why and what the hell for? Like, what's going on? Like, why? What is this thing? Right. It's kind of like those, it's, it kind of reminds me of like those, all those older games that they kind of like create them and you just get thrown into the world and you're like, all right, it's time to, time to game. And there's no other back, background or story or context given into what right. you're having to do. It's just, all right, it's, it's time to, it's time to do the thing, you know? That's so lost. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of Crazy Taxi where it's like, why am I a taxi? Like, what's going on? <laughs> why am I? Why am I doing this? And it's a crazy taxi. And it's like, yeah, but but why though? 
<laughs> it's like, nope. Why? Why am I crazy? Yeah. Oh man. Uh, games where I clearly didn't belong. I can't think of any other ones. Uh, there's probably some other ones, but those really stick out to me. Um, just a lot of like bewilderment, and I'm, it's like, oh, just some things. It really, you know, it's it's they're great moments to, in life. It just kind of remind you that some things just ain't for you, and that's okay. Yeah, some you things just, don't belong, and sometimes that's you. Yep, a hundred percent. You just got to let it go. You don't try to ruin it. You don't try to take it from people. You don't try to buy it out from them or make them shut it down. You just say, have fun, guys. <laughs> GG next. GG, this is good for you, right? Um, yeah. Well, that segment out the way, that topic out the way, we are at final thoughts. Where we can give a final thought about something that is either related or unrelated to this podcast episode. So, Who's given the final thought first? You want to go? I'll go. Um, so there is a this kind of like topic of discussion that's been emerging. Uh, I think it's like called Stop Killing Games. I don't know if you've heard about this. Um, I, I don't think I have. It's it's essentially there's a YouTuber named Lewis Rosman who I've watched for a long time. He's mostly a uh consumers rights advocate in regards of like re like rights repair mostly like, like like a lot of like apple products right like the idea that you should be able to have the right to repair your product and have access to be able to repair it without having to go through an authorized reseller or someone like that or different things like you should have more control over that company shouldn't dictate how you repair items that you own that you have a right that that you personally buy so one of the things he talked about was stop killing games and it was because i believe it goes back to ubisoft shut down the servers for the crew the first one mm -hmm. and so um anyone who bought the game can no longer play it it's an all online game so when right. you shut down the servers no one can play it um and he was kind of making the argument that like hey this uh this isn't this isn't fair to the people that bought the game even if you aren't going even if you don't want to lo no longer support it you should allow there to be the ability for people who play the game to host the game on their own private servers if they want to um and the idea that and we've talked about this before that i think at some point 90 percent of games that were at once released are not playable 90 percent of games that existed that were published are not right. playable right now uh because they were taken offline the technology for them has been circumvented, deemed, you know, no longer necessary. Right. Uh, and it, it just kind of goes back to this thing we've talked about, like games archiving and game history uh, and being able to do that. These publishers and these companies don't care about that because it's not a profit incentive. They don't make money by making their games available to you uh, when they don't make money off of them. They don't make money when they make their games, when they preserve their games. It's just not something that's in their interest. But to us, who are, who are participants in gaming, who love gaming, who see it more than just a hobby, but an actual art. Um, it's important that we're able to preserve these things. Um, yeah, I agree. Like, I've talked before, I think I mentioned before, maybe a, a few episodes ago, that, like, you can't buy Spec Ops The Line on, on any online game store anymore. Mm -hmm. That, to me, is a game that maybe from a pure gameplay percept, you know, perspective... It's not noteworthy, but from a storytelling mechanism and how it handles uh, psychology and uh, mental health and PTSD, uh, it's an interesting way of doing it that not a lot of games do. Games in general don't 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 tackle topics like that. And the top and the tackle it the way it did is unique. And the idea that people can't go on now, can't go online anymore and buy that game and experience that story and experience those those characters. That's something that doesn't work in the best interest of games for the long term. So right. stop killing games is about that. And uh, yeah, we should voice our opinion and voice, you know, that we want publishers to stop killing their games. Yeah. Uh, but that's, uh, yeah, that's my final thought. Yeah. There's, there's two. I know that no three that I personally played that just, are gone there was mm -hmm. a mobile app for titanfall it was like kind of like domination you know there was three flags and you know that was fun and it is gone within a year mm -hmm. um another one is knockout city i didn't play that one too much but that was a really fun dodgeball game no one's ever done that before at least as well as they did and now mm -hmm. that's gone yeah. and uh i just lost the third one where did it go 
Mm. I don't know. But there was a third one. And well, I, I, one that comes to mind, and I can't remember if they made it accessible again. Uh, but one that comes to mind to me is, is Warcraft 3. I don't know if you remember the story that there was Warcraft 3. It's been around for a long time. One of the best RTS is ever made. And then Blizzard decided to do a re... I don't know if a remake is the right word. More of a remaster called Warcraft 3 Reforged. And that required them... What they did do, it didn't require them. But what they did do is they replaced Warcraft 3 with Warcraft 3 Reforged. If you wanted to play Warcraft 3, the original, you couldn't access it anymore. Oh, so wow. now... If you want to play that game, you no longer have access to it. If it's a preferred experience you want to have, you can't have that experience anymore. Um, and so, uh, yeah, shouldn't do that because if you bought the license, even if you bought a license to the, and again, you're buying licenses, right? That, that's what they say. You're not buying the games. You're buying licenses to the games. Right. Um, that you should be able to access it. And one of the main debates have been that they're saying, yeah, you don't own the game. You own a license to it. And the retort is, well, if I don't own the game and I only own a license to it, then when um, I decide to acquire the, the, the game through other means, that's not piracy. Because piracy is taking something that someone else owns and no one owns right. it. Right. So. Yeah. I thought of it. Yeah. Apex Mobile. Okay. That's gone. And another uh, yeah. one, Overwatch, is gone. The original Overwatch, it's just, right? It's, it's just, just Overwatch, Overwatch 2. 2. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, the idea that there's not, like, like you couldn't join a bunch of private servers or somewhere where if you wanted to play the original instance of Overwatch 1, you could just go and play it. Right, right? you know, like, right. if, if they kept, like, the last update, mm -hmm. and then that was it. That's the game for forever. Yeah. But, but no, it's just, it doesn't exist. Yep. Yep. Oh, yep. that, that's a, this is a good final thought mm, thank you yeah let let the games live let them live stop killing them ah uh, okay my final thought is so obviously you know gamers we spend as much time as we can you know sometimes a couple hours here more than a couple hours there and usually you know it's a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you with your game. Mm -hmm. And I have these two cards here right under my monitor that I keep. So one of them is an electrode that nice. my son gave me. And then the other one is a bell sprout card, but they put stickers on it with a Jolteon. And that one I got from my partner. So I keep those under my monitor so when i you know i look at them i think of them and mm -hmm. you know shout out to them shout out to them that's very so nice I, I might not be with them but they're with me you know yeah now your partner when they put the start when they put the stickers in the jolteon on there was that and what was the, do you know what the intent of that was oh yeah she was evil <laughs> hey, look! I got this really cool Jolteon. You want to trade me your, your holographic card? <laughs> That's nice to know. It's good yeah, to know. It's, uh, she's better now. She's a very yeah. nice person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she got it out of her system way early. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Um, wait. So, do they? Do you probably have more than they have like a, like multiple? Do they have a, a Pokemon card collection? No, they, she doesn't have them anymore. She just randomly have that one left ah okay there you go okay yeah cool, cool. uh all righty i remember finding my pokemon card collection a little while ago i think i have to figure out what's happening in my there. closet right right here yeah i had it in a box and i think i took in it was in a book in a box i think i took the book out I so like i got five see if binders I full yeah i wish i had my man i had some bangers Oh man! That's but how how good was the condition? They were good. So a lot of so a lot of the really good cards I had were Japanese Pokemon cards. Oh, I have some of those. Yeah, because I I did not know how to take care of them that well. Like, but the Charizard that I yeah. have that I pulled, yeah. it's, it has some scratches and dings, and you know, like I wouldn't be able to get a lot of money for it. Yeah. Like I have it though. Like, hey, 
Yeah, you know, try something. But man, I didn't know you, you know, the sleeve your cards and you know, the hard yep. cases. And yeah. I, I was just like, they're just in the sleeve that, you know, the three by three. I mm-hmm. don't know if they'll even come out with the color still or if it's just going to be stuck to the freaking Yeah, or if it's, yeah, if it's right on there. Yeah. yeah I remember when so. I was, I remember when I was younger, I always thought, you know what, if it ever gets like really bended up, I can just take an iron to it. Just take an iron to <laughs> just, it and just, and just smooth just it right out, it out. Right? Just put it back. So stupid. So that, children are so stupid. I, they don't know. But yeah. that, I mean, that is that's some fine thinking. You were it thinking is the fine right thinking. way. It is. It's, just, and it, 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 it's, that's the best thinking when a kid is thinking the right way, but it's 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 so smart, but it's so stupid. That's when it's, it's the best <laughs> one. When you're like, man, you were like, really putting that hit that that has you know, the dials. Thought, you know? It's just yeah. flinging back and forth. Yep, hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's great. Well, that leads us to the uh, end of level 113 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you like what you heard, like, follow, and subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. You can also find us on the socials like Facebook and Twitter and Thoughts and Players. Um, and as well as on YouTube, where we upload video versions of the podcast every week. If you want to support us, there's a couple of ways you can do that. One, check out the merch store, uh, the Spring Creator Store, where we have a bunch of things like phone cases and shirts and hats. You can, uh, you know, rip that merch, get yourself some drip there, as the kid said, I think three years ago. Uh, and then also, we have a Patreon. Three tiers, two, five, and seven dollar tiers, uh, where you can get rights, you get exclusive goodies on Patreon. Uh, before they either hit, you know, YouTube and some stuff doesn't hit at all. It just stays on, on Patreon. Uh, but that is it for me. David, was there anything else you wanted to add? Peace. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. And we will catch you on the next level. <laughs>